powerful God. Amen? Amen. So let's declare Psalm 91. We've been declaring this powerful scripture. If you can go to Psalm 91, we'll declare that together with boldness. And let's begin. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, and I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God, and Him I will trust. And surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste in noonday. A ten thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Give him the praise. Thank you, Father. And now Pastor Sri is going to deliver this awesome Bible study. I know it's powerful. May you be blessed. Pastor Sri. Give him a minute. He's coming. He's coming. All right. There you go. Let there be sound. <laughs> now there is sound. Amen. God is good. Awesome. Awesome. All the time. Somebody said all the time and some. Awesome. God is good all the time, right? One of these days I'll get it right. <laughs> all right. You guys are doing good? Yeah. Um, I'd like for us to go to our Bible study, which is part 17. That's what we're doing. Um, about Hebrews, that's one of the most uh, theologically debated uh, book uh, because it provides a lot of insight that uh, that is more spiritual than philosophical or something that can be quantified or justified purely through uh, intelligence. You know, uh, <clears throat> we have degraded ourselves uh, as humans that um, we can only function in the known, in the seen. Um, but God always pushes us to the unknown and the unseen. Um, that is why faith is so important for us to live the life God has ordained. You don't need faith to live a human life. Um, this is not about human life. This is about God life. Amen. What Bible calls about it. What Bible calls it as Zoe. Or uh, it can also be translated as life eternal. Or the way God has ordained. The life God has ordained. If you want to live the life that God has ordained. You have to have faith. You cannot do God's will, God's plan, God pur God's purpose without us doing it by faith. That's why the Bible clearly says the just shall live by faith. Amen? Um, so it, it is not, not a good thing to have faith. 
is not a good thing to have it's a necessary thing to have if we don't consider as a necessity we are always trying to spin our own way in faith and as a matter of fact you have to understand the only way you will know faith is when it works otherwise it's just an idea and many people uh, uh, talk about faith many people uh, justify their faith without uh, 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 being able to quantify it or without finding a path for it and uh, the faith that Bible talks about is not a faith that uh, is uh, out there and that is mysterious or mystical or any such thing there is no such thing uh, when it comes to biblical faith this faith is um, quantified rightly and uh, there is a pathway to get results as a matter of fact you know many times Christians I believe are lazy this is uh, uh, probably the appropriate word I can use Christians are so lazy if that doesn't work if your prayer didn't work that you will assume that it is because God didn't want that that is a lazy Christian faith the reason why I say that is you should never start a prayer without knowing the will of God because your prayer ought to be lined with the will of God when we can line up with the will of God with the Word of God that's when you can expect a result you can have a hope an earnest hope and an earnest expectation you can have it at the end because you started your faith in his word the true biblical faith starts when you know the will of God if you are just trying to throw things up and try to let it stick that is not faith as a matter of fact um, it's a fact fact most of the Christians stay there we are just begging God for his mercy God have mercy on me God have mercy on me we are always trying to do that yes there are times that we have to have mercy from him we have to seek that Lord help me out in here I'm in this trouble but even for that the basis for that is that he promised that he will be with you in trouble we should never go to him because you have a need you should go to him because he promised to meet that need if that is not the path you are taking you're taking a path of a heathen or a person that doesn't have a covenant with God when you have a covenant with God there is a connection with God how can I approach my father how can I approach the heaven that the, the, those kinds of things you can find them out if you uh, uh, understand the will of your father remember Jesus time and time again he tries to explain to his disciples to all of us saying hey I haven't come here to to prove how great I am he never once tried that as a matter of fact he always says I'm here to do the will of my father I'm here to fulfill the will of my father that is what he always said so I'm here to uh, encourage every one of us I, I'm, I'm, I know we I told this multi multiple times I just want this to settle down so much in us that we are not running around finding uh, uh, let me pray let me throw this thing up and let me see if it sticks we need to we need to uh, um, stop doing that but instead we have to come to a, a confidence Bible talks about if you ask according to his will you should know that he heard you and if he have heard you he will also do it for you so we have to live in a, a life of confidence not a, 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 a life of uncertainty let me see if God answers this instead we have to go into more and more every day our pursuit ought to be growing and growing and growing into this 
this uh, uh, position that God has given us where we be like, okay, if God said, he will also do it. He will also do it. Yeah, our faith and his faithfulness. Who's going to be matching whom? That should be a competition between you and your father. If you want to compete with God the Father, compete for his faithfulness. His faithfulness is according to your faith. He always tells that. He again, even Jesus was on this earth when he was on this earth. He tried to explain that to all these people. It is done to you according to your faith. And when he dis rebuked his disciples, he didn't rebuke them for what kind of a dress they wore or what kind of a food they ate, the food they ate on Sabbath. He didn't rebuke them for none of that. None of the human traditions. He wasn't worried about that at all. But one thing he always he rebuked them for is, Oh, you of little faith. Oh, you of no faith. How long am I going to be with you? That was his rebuke to his disciples. Anytime he rebuked, it's predominantly for their faith. Um, so we have to put more emphasis on this than you and me are probably doing. And I, 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 I come across many people uh, talking about, oh, we need to pray, we need to pray more, or we need to praise, or we need to uh, do this, or we need to do that. I agree. I agree to an extent. But we have to do it by faith. It doesn't matter how long you prayed. If you are not doing it by faith. It's not the matter of time. It's a matter of faith. How much of faith are you pumping into it? And remember, Jesus gives the measurement of it. Oh, you of no faith. Oh, you of little faith. I have never seen someone with this kind of faith. He measures faith. According to the measure, Bible says, the measure, God, God has given everyone the measure of faith. But how much are we using? Makes all the difference. Even though we don't like to work out, believe it or not, you have a six pack. You have an eight pack in you. Amen. But when you work out, it comes out. It's the same thing with us as we work our faith, work out our faith. The more we are working it out, the more you will see the results of faith. Not the results of your word, but the results of your faith. Imagine that. Faith that changes the world. Faith that overcomes the world. Faith that puts us in a place where no man can do that but you. Because you're doing it by faith. Why should you be the only one blessed on your block? Because of your faith. Not because you have a need. But because of your faith. You know, out of all those thousands of people that are thronging Jesus, why should that one woman with the issue of blood should be healed? But what the human mind tries to tell you is, oh, one in a million will get that chance. No, you could be that one in a million. That's why he gave you faith to become that one in the million. Oh, it only happens once in a lifetime. Okay, you're living. Make it happen now. All those once in a lifetime things can happen in your lifetime. Amen. So we have to push ourselves to a place where we can see God's glory manifesting in our life. It requires faith to see his glory. It requires faith to see his glory. Are you looking for his glory? Give faith. Give faith. Without giving faith, you won't be able to see the glory. Even when the glory is manifesting, you won't be able to see it. Because the whole, the whole creation is right there. But only the person who has faith can see the hand of the creator behind the creation. You could be seeing anything and everything around, but if you don't have faith, you won't see the hand of God. How did this happen to you? 
How did this happen only to you? Because of your faith. I'm here to tell you something. I mean, I just want to uh, uh, congratulate you in one way because most of you are standing here only because of your faith. Only because of your faith. If it wasn't for your faith, by now you would have been knocked dead. By now you would have been pulled away. By now you would have been dragged to hell. But it is your faith that keeps doing and making you and enabling you to keep doing it again and again and again. So I'm here to encourage every one of us that we cannot give up on the very powerful thing that you and me have, which is your faith, which is your faith. As much as we want to acknowledge the power of God, it is useless to us if we don't use our faith. The power of God is immense. The power of God is beyond comprehension. The power of God can uh, raise the dead. But it is your faith that channels that power. You got to have faith connection. That is what I am trying all the more. The one thing that I want everybody to do is people, are, people get f fascinated and, 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 and excited about miracles and all those things. But I am here to tell you something. I don't want miracles to happen. I want miracles to happen through you. That is what God has commissioned you for. To be able to release his glory wherever you go. But you cannot be that glory releaser if you, have no, if you are not exercising faith. So we have to understand that faith is not just something that is out there or something good to have. But it is essential for us. It is an essential thing for us. As you breathe, you should also have faith. That's how much it should become common for us. And that's why it is important that we know the will of God. We study the word of God. We listen to the word of God. That is what, you know, instead of filling yourself with all this garbage nonsense that goes on all around, the, 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 uh, uh, what the politicians are saying, what these people are saying, what the economists are saying, instead of filling yourself with all that, let me tell you something, fill yourself up with faith. With the word of God that brings faith, because faith begins when you know the will of God. Faith comes through hearing and by he hearing by the word of God. Let faith arise. Let the faith grow, not your emotions, not your feelings, not your doubts, not your fears. Because, you know, I have seen this thing. Fear is kind of like a, 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 it's like a compound interest. It never leaves your side. If you, if you think you conquered this fear, then you will see another lump of fears. Then there is another lump of fears. The only way you can, act, you can overcome this thing is if you keep doing it by faith, not trying to overcome fear. Don't try to overcome fear. You will again face another mountain of fears. Instead, always climb by faith. Always do it by faith. When you are doing it by faith, you are automatically or by default, you are overcoming fear. So I encourage every one of us, let us be skillful faith users. If you want to build a resume, build a resume on how to use faith. How to use faith. How to use faith to raise children. How to use faith to, uh, uh, to increase your income. How to use faith to increase your strength. How to use faith... How to use faith. In a childlike faith, there are times that I would use my faith for the, for the darnest things. For the weirdest things you can imagine I did. Like I wanted power to be coming on. I wanted my clothes to be washed. So I go to the washer and say, you better work in the name of Jesus. <laughs> and I have seen it work. But then the very next day, as though I was getting ready to form a theology out of it, that it should work for you all the time, God tells me, no, you dummy. There is always wisdom that you have to use along with faith. 
So every time the, the machine is not working, it's like oh, maybe because you are poorly managing it. Maybe because you are not being wise enough. So we have to understand faith and wisdom go hand in hand. You have, we have to, that's why I'm talking about being a skillful faith user. A skillful person doesn't use anything and everything for everything and anything. He uses a specific tool for specific things. If that's not the case, you're not a skillful user. You're an amateur. Amen? Can we have some faith professionals here? I love to prophesy over you that faith professionals are, being co are coming out of Covenant Vision Church. Faith professionals. What is your profession? I'm a faith person. I use faith. What do you do for a living? I use faith. I use faith. I use faith. I use faith. I'm a faith user. Amen. Let me tell you something. If you can build your resume in that, build your skill in that, you have all these things that are going to add on to you rather than worrying about anything and everything. Amen? And then uh, I, I, I've seen other people. They, 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 are, they are more excited about hearing from God than them applying it. They hear from God saying, oh, God spoke something. Okay, what's the big deal? Are you doing it? Are you living it? Because it doesn't produce any result if you don't act by faith. The same way the woman with the issue of blood, she acted on her faith that she gotten in her. She acted, she stepped out and she crawled herself. She, is alive. she did anything and everything possible to exercise her faith. When she was exercising her faith, that's when she reached out to the hem of his garment. If only I touch it, I will be healed. She was exercising her faith. You know, Christian people these days, you know, we, we are becoming so much as like these uh, YouTube influencers. These, these social media influencers. What do, what do influencers do? Whole bunch of nothing. Whole bunch of nothing. They don't do anything. Yet they get paid. And we think it's going to work the same way in Jesus, with God. No, if you don't work, don't eat. You know, even though we try to imply that or apply that into working uh, uh, with our hands and all such things, which is... No, which isn't untrue. You should work. That's not the point I'm talking about. You have to work your faith. Faith without works is dead. You got to work your faith. We got to get into that, uh, that habit where we are working our faith. Every day what are we doing? I'm working out my faith. Look at yourself. Look at everything that is coming. What are we doing? We are working our faith. I'm building my faith. I'm trying to listen something here. I'm trying to, uh, uh, you know, it's not about great word. It's about what the word did to you. How did it transform you? How did you apply it to you? If you are not going to apply it to you, let me tell you, the word of God is worth garbage. Because word doesn't work like that. Word has to be worked out. So faith has to be worked out. Faith has to be put to work. Not let it sit. Amen. I mean here lately with all these things that are happening. With, the, uh, uh, with these YouTube prophets, YouTube preachers and all these people that are coming up. I, I'm, I'm, I'm all about the prophetic word. I'm all about all these things. But how much are they living the word? If they are not going to live their word, I don't care for their gift. Because they are going to fail one day or other. Amen? So we have to look for how much they are working the word. How much are they living by faith? You know, their gift allows them to minister to others. That doesn't mean they are living by faith. I've seen so many people that could lay hands on the sick and the sick will be healed. But they don't have faith to believe for their one, uh, believe for their ten dollars for them. That's why they manipulate people to give them ten dollars. Amen. 
Amen. Hebrews 13. As you can see, this is the last chapter. So this today is the last day for us, our study on this. Hebrews 13. Let brotherly love continue. The, you know, while in the middle of all the faith, he talks about brotherly love. Not the agape. The brotherly love. Philios. It's important that we have a love relationship with each other. It's important because faith is meant to, to, for us to bond together. Faith is meant to work in the together atm atmosphere. Do not forget to entertain strangers. For by so doing, some are unwittingly entertained angels. This is another thing. The society teaches us the strangers mean the homeless or the people that you may not know. Let me tell you something. That's only partial truth. That's a heathen concept. Why would I say that? Stranger is defined in the Bible. Particularly in the Old Testament. A stranger is someone staying where he doesn't belong. He or she doesn't belong. Some homeless people belong to be homeless. Let me be very honest. Why you may say that, that is how they made choices. That's how they want to live. You can give whatever you want to give. They'll stay there. Some addicts, you can tell them they're not strangers. They are there willingly. Are you with me here? So that's why I don't try to have this Mother Teresa syndrome on us. But instead be the faith people who entertains the strangers. The stranger, Bible talks about in the Old Testament where he talks about Israelites saying, don't forget the strangers because you were once a stranger in the land of Egypt. That is the stranger definition. Draw the stranger definition from that. And this is another important thing I want us to understand. Third chapter. Remember the prisoners as if chained with them. Those who were mistreated. It is important that we pray for them. You know on Friday we watched that video of somebody who have been prisoned for wrong reasons. For him preaching the gospel. Or for him doing the mission work that he has been called. He has been prisoned right now in the United States of America. Let us continue to pray. Those chains will be broken. Those chains will be broken in the name of Jesus. Our brother will be free in Jesus name. Not only that brother. There are so many brothers and sisters that are being imprisoned wrongfully right now. Just because they preached gospel. In the name of Jesus. Let us rebuke that hand in Jesus name. Those Caesars that are trying to control the gospel. That are trying to control the voice of the Lord. Let us rebuke those names in the name of Jesus. And also the other thing that is happening here is people are being present for wrong political reasons. Wrong reasons. Unjust is what God calls. We, we, need to, we need to pray for those people that are being put in there for unjust reasons. Mistreated for unjust reasons so, so we may get them out. I'm going to tell you something. The year of Jubilee is about setting the captives free. In the name of Jesus, I'm here to declare a year of Jubilee over our families, over our relatives, over our friends that have been wrongfully prisoned, whether it is for their, uh, for their uh, gospel uh, preaching or whether it is for some other reasons. If they are in the prison for wrong reasons, we, we rebuke those chains and we release them off those handcuffs in the name of Jesus. And if they are mistreated, let us imagine ourselves being mistreated. If it was you who has been put in the prison for, for all you said was Jesus is the Lord. And now these days, you know, another prison that we are seeing, the, 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 the social media prison. I don't have time for that. Fourth verse. Marriage is honorable among all. Among how many? 
if you really want to live an honorable life think about marriage do the things that are required in the marriage marriage ought to be given that honor it is it has to be exalted a society that can exalt marriage will always see the goodness of god a society that can exalt marriage will always see the favor of god you know why these these uh, uh, pestilences or these destructions or these these uh, things that are happening all around us particularly in our nation it's because we stopped honoring marriage we stopped we stopped honoring marriage and we we instead of giving the honor the due place that it deserves we're trying to make anything and everything a marriage sin a marriage no it's not and i see some of these women that live with a guy and and they never got married yet they say they are my husband you you lying to yourself and you're lying to everybody let me tell you something devil got you back if you're lying to yourself like that that ain't marriage that is not honorable it's actually deceiving and then the other thing right now with this same sex marriage no it's not marriage it's not marriage not the way god has ordained that is not how god has ordained but we have to remember this thing marriage is honorable among all maybe i am single maybe i'm ha- i'm mean, having a bad marriage in my life maybe i'm having bad things or bad start bad times in my life that's all right that's all part of the part of the plan but let us not uh, stop exalting marriage because of your experience let not your experience dilute god's plan and the bed undefiled but fornicators and adulterers god will judge you know if there is no marriage there is no fornication you know if there is no marriage there is no adultery you know that is one of the reasons they want to eliminate marriage if they can successfully eliminate marriage there is nothing nothing they in their eyes that there is no such thing called fornication or there is no such thing called adultery if any one of you are hearing for the first time fornication is pre marriage adultery is in the marriage doing it with somebody else neither one of them the, those things are valuable if only marriage is valuable if marriage is not exalted those things mean nothing i want you to see the craftiness of devil in here why he wants to destroy marriage because he wants to make fornication common he wants to make adultery common look at our society right now If somebody was to say I I'm going to stay virgin till I get married everybody will mock at them as though they are doing something sinful and awful Let me tell you something if you are that person who is trying to say that to somebody you are an offense to the kingdom of God You better shut up If somebody is doing that appreciate them praise them for that And let me also tell you something there won't be an unwanted unwanted child if you can stick to marriage How about that for a change instead of trying to kill the baby after boy baby was already in the womb why not why not we try not to have it at all There's a choice And who is going to judge them? Not man. God. As a man I may be able to give you a pass because you are committing adultery, but that doesn't mean a thing. Are you with me here? Because you and your God knows exactly what you did and when you did. And as a matter of fact, these things are between you and your God. he even looks at your thoughts when it comes to this 
you so much as look at that person and think about that person in that line, you are committing sin. Is what the Bible says. <laughs> that requires a lot of scrutiny. But at the same time, it frees you up to be very open with the Lord. It should put us in a place where we can be openly talking about any and any, any and every temptation. So he may be able to minister to us, heal us, give us the strength, give us the wisdom on how to deal with such situations. They're not going away. You should be old enough to know nothing is going away. You need to deal with it. Amen. So now, fifth verse. Let your conduct be without um, covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what can man do to me. What a bold statement. What a bold life that you can live. What is man that he can do to me? Are you going to kill me? Hey, if I die, I'm going to go to Christ. What's the big deal about this? Are you going to throw me in under this? What's the big deal? You know what? I'm already in Christ. I'm already in Christ. That is the boldness that God is asking us. You know why he is saying that? Because I will never leave you nor forsake you. I want to read that same verse from Amplified. Classic Amplified version. Fifth verse. Let your character. Let your character or moral disposition be free from love of money. Including greed, avarice, lust. Craving off for earthly possessions. And be satisfied with your present circumstances and what you have. For he, God himself, have said. Look at this. Why does he, why he wants you to be satisfied with what you have? Not because he doesn't want you to have more. That's another lie people preach a lot. That's another lie. No, no, no. You don't need to be looking anywhere to give you more. Come to me because I am faithful. I will take care of you. I will help you how to become rich. I will help you how to become abundant. I will teach you everything that requires for you to be where you ought to be. Instead of complaining about your life, oh, I'm a mess. Oh, my life is a mess. Oh, I'm full of sorrow. I'm full of suffering. I'm this. I'm this. I wish I had more money. I wish. People live in that dis dissatisfied life so much. Now, this is what this is where it gets very interesting. I will not in any way fail you. I will not in any way fail you. Nor give you up. Nor leave you without support. It's an amazing threat to follow. He's not only saying... I'm going to somehow supernaturally meet you... But I also will be providing you the support... There is always some support for you. God has made a, that, that provision for you somewhere. God has already have an answer for you somewhere. I will not. Look at this. This is what I just gets me so excited. I will not. I will not. I will not. The Lord says it three times. I will not. I will not. I will not. In any degree leave you helpless, nor forsake you, nor let you down. Relax my hold on you, assuredly not. In any which way, I'm not going to let my guard down. I'm not going to let, let my hold off. I'm going to hold you and I'm going to continue to hold you. Amen. Amen. You know, we as parents, we try to hold on to our children. But it gets tough at one point. No matter how much I love the child, you have to put them down. You're getting too heavy, man. But gee, God says, no, I will not. 
I will no, never let you out. No matter how tough it gets. That's a character to build. And in here God is looking for a character. Your character is what, what he is looking for, not for anything else. So let's focus on a character which is we are consistent all the time. You know, we, we, I always make this statement. Uh, we want to depend on God. Can God depend on you? Can God depend on you? Because you swing by the mood. You swing by the day. Not today, God. I'm not going to be nice today. I'm not going to be kind today because I have some problems. I have something going on today, so it gives me an excuse to do, do whatever I want. No, you don't. That's where your character comes out. The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Going back to that sixth verse. The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. Come on church. The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. Come on, let it sink. The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. Remember those who rule over you, who uh, have spoken the word of God to you, whose faith follow, considering the outcome of their conduct. It's just because they have a big ministry doesn't mean anything. What is their conduct? Are they conducting themselves by faith? We look at all the other things to quantify. I'm just telling you, don't waste your time. Oh, that preacher has a jet. That preacher has this. That preacher has this fancy car. I'm not going to listen to you. You may be setting yourself to fail. That's not the qualifiers or disqualifiers. You have to look for the conduct of their faith. Are they living by faith or not? That's what matters the most. The rest of the things doesn't. We are so caught up in all these other things that we are forgetting what matters the most. That is exactly how the devil wants to divide the body of Christ. We are not united by money. We are not united by songs. We are not united by the clothes that we wear. We are only united by faith. Unity of faith. Amen. I always tell you this thing. I'll tell you again. Rich is a relative term. Anybody that lives in America. He's a rich person to anybody in the world. Are you really rich? Living on your broke uh, social security income? Now I'm just saying. From our standpoint. It's like. Um, yeah. <laughs> but. But. But, but from somebody seeing from the other side think you are rich. They would die for your social security income. But remember those who rule over you. These are not politi political leaders that we are talking about. God has given leadership over us spiritually. Your spirit requires that. You, as much as you say, I can go to God however I want, no. You are also required a leadership. That's why God gave some to be pastors, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be apostles, some to be teachers. Why? For the equipping of the saints. If we don't understand that umbrella, if we don't understand the power of that leadership, we are missing out on our biggest opportunity on this earth. So the, the, whose faith follow, considering the outcome of their conduct. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That means a consistency. Jesus is consistent. We got to look for people who are consistent. Which is becoming so hard to find these days. It's becoming so hard. I can't predict you tomorrow. Today you are all excited and uh, with me. Are you like that tomorrow? Don't know. 
Maybe the feelings will get the best of you. The emotions will get the best of you. Maybe we need to work more on that, how we can be consistent. How we can be consistent. Because Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. So can we not have the same testimony? Don is the same yesterday, today and forever. Sheila is the same yesterday and today and forever. Ben is the same yesterday, today and forever. That should be our testimony. That should be our pursuit. We have to have that consistency. Amen. Do not be, this is, this is how it helps. Do not be carried about the various strange doctrines. Everybody that becomes a popular prophet, people run after them. People run after them, run, run, run after this person. What is the next hit thing? Maybe we as Americans, we need to stop worshipping the pop culture so much. That it has influenced the church leadership so much. Who is the next pop preacher? That's whom we are looking for. That is whom we are looking for. That is whom we are looking for. And that is how we continue to do that. That, uh, that we have to look for that person all the time. That one person. Even that, 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 that falls into every area, even into the politics, we have to have that one person. That is my savior, that is my... No, you can't. Let me be very honest with you. Man is replaceable. That, imply, that includes you. That includes you. That should humble you. That should humble all of us. I'm replaceable. And when we can, you know, remember, Jesus says, if you don't do that, I'm going to make the rocks do it. How quickly he said you are replaceable. Yet he didn't choose to. Every day he is pleading with us so we can live in the position he has given us. But he says, for it is good that the heart be established by grace. The heart being established by grace. Not with foods which have not profited those who have been occupied with them. We are so consumed with these things these days. We are always trying to judge each other. We are always thinking we are better than others. We are always with that mindset. Let me tell you something. The healing begins when you stop doing that. Jesus himself did not do that. And why do we do that? And when we do that, the more we do that, the more we are causing ourselves to fail. Putting ourselves in a place that we can't excel the way God wants to excel us. This in no way means that we are, we are going to propagate the darkness. No, we don't. We shouldn't. That is not our plan. That is not our, our, our uh, anointing. We are for the light. We are for the truth. We have to stand on it. But we as individuals, we should never puff up. We should never be in a place thinking you are better than someone else. That's why Bible says, exalt one another. It's easier for me to find fault in you. Let me make it even easier for me to find something good in you so I can appreciate that. Amen. What does that do? That builds our body. The body of Christ. So let, uh, for it is good that the heart be established by grace, not with foods which have not profited those who have been occupied with them. We have so much of the so much of food gospel these days than the real food gospel. So much of all these things that go on all around than the real manna that saves our soul. We have an altar for which you know. I'm, 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 anytime we are eating food, we have these these uh, labels on it. Whatever you are going going into your body, I get it. I get it. Your body is the temple. You got to keep it. But I'm going to tell you something. Your temple has no value if there is no spirit in it. 
what are the warnings that you are pre uh, taking in or what are the precautions and the precautions that you are taking in not to offend the Holy Spirit do not quench the spirit amen your bitterness quenches the spirit your condemnation quenches the spirit. Your guilt quenches the spirit. Your anxiety quenches the spirit. What are we doing about them? Oh, I don't eat carbs. Why not you not eat anxiety? If that is possible that you can't eat carbs, that you won't eat carbs, this is possible too. Don't eat anxiety. Are you with me here? Oh, we just blame it. Oh man, it's impossible. No, you don't exercise. That's all. It only takes exercise. That's why consistency matters. Consistency. When you build character, when you build that consistency, you do it day in and day out. You keep doing, keep doing, keep doing, keep doing, keep doing, keep doing. What happens? It becomes your habit. We have an altar, uh, he goes, we have an altar, 10th verse, we have an altar from which those who serve the tabernacle have no right to eat for the bodies of those animals whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned outside the camp. Therefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered outside the gate. Therefore, let us go for, let, uh, therefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood suffered outside the gate. Therefore, let us go forth to him outside the camp bearing his reproach. For here we have no continuing city, but we seek the one to come. Glory be to God, we have an eternal city, a city everlasting. That's why you need faith everlasting. Because you have a life everlasting. Therefore, by him, let us continually offer sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. But do not forget to do good and to share, for which such sacrifices God is well pleased. Obey those who rule over you. <laughs> if I say that as a pastor, look at my pastor, he's trying to control me. <laughs> Oh, Lord. These are, they, this is not about the people that are in the government. These are the people that God has put in his government. Amen. We have more obedience to the government than, than his government on this earth. Let's think about that for a minute. And you know, these days if we talk about submission, it's a, it's a, it's a very bad word. We don't want to talk about submission. We're always about, oh yeah, I'm, I'm a free guy, I'm a free guy, I'm a free guy. Let me tell you something, the more you claim yourself to be free, you're more in debt. The same measure with which you measure yourself will be measured back to you, right? That means if you claim yourself to be free, you are responsible as a free guy. <laughs> Self-employed taxes are different. Because you're claiming to be self-employed, you, you, the burden of paying all the taxes are on you, not on the payroll system. It's a different setup. I, I, I hope I made sense there. But anyway, o -o obey those who rule over you and be submissive, for they watch out for your souls as those who must give account. This is why, this is what I want us to understand also. Any preacher, any preacher out there doesn't mean a thing to you if he is preaching a good word and not watching out for your soul. That's where the importance comes. Is there somebody watching out for my soul or not? If that is not somebody that is doing that for you, you don't need to be there. We are losing that, that thing, the role of a pastor, the role of a, of a man of God. We are supposed to wrestle for each individual. We are supposed to wrestle for your soul. 
Many of us are walking away from it. I can boldly say this, this, this God, let God be the witness. But any time that God has given me that mission for any one of you, even some of them that don't sit here or may not even be watching us, those people I wrestle for their soul. You don't even know how many times I have sleepless nights just because I'm wrestling in the spirit for somebody else. Times I couldn't spend time with my children. Times I couldn't spend time with my wives. Times I couldn't do this or that. Just because I'm engaged in the spiritual battle. But let me also tell you, I'll count it all joy. Because I'm doing my job. So let them do so with joy, not with grief. You know why? I am accountable for that. Did I fight for you? That is my accountability. Let them do so with joy. Whoever is submitting, let them do so with joy, not with grief. We have so much of attitude when it comes to this. We have so much. We think, oh, I'm better than this. I'm better than him. I'm better. No, it's not about that. God has positioned and put someone in our life. Let us appreciate them. Let us honor them. Let us give them the due respect so we may have that blessing continue to flow into our lives. But here, for that would not be unprofitable, that, that, for that would be unprofitable for you, not to the man of God. For you, for us, for every individual, when God has put someone in our life, if we are not doing that submission part, it is us who is going to lose the benefit. And never do it out of grief, let us do it with joy. Here he ends it with a prayer. Pray for us, for we are confident that we have a good conscience in all things desiring to live honorably. But I especially urge you to do this, that I may be restored to you sooner. You know, that, that, that has been my pursuit as a pastor of this church. How much I can live honorably. How much I can conduct myself even as the church, whether it is church finances or church things, whatever it may be, even for my personal conduct, there are many things that I may prefer to do as an individual, but I don't do it for the sake of the church. Every one of us are responsible for that. Conducting ourselves to honor God. Just because you can do it doesn't mean you should. Because there is no profit in it. Our lives are to be profitable, not a, a vague venture, a profitable venture. God has, God, if you look at God as a real estate agent, he, he puts you there as a profitable venture. Not as someone to exist and go by. Amen? I might be coming strong, but I am also trying to give you a word of encouragement in it. Well, I am doing it because I want you to see how much God wants us to do and come to the next levels so he may pour more of him into us. We are so much, so many of us are so complacent, so happy with where we are. We are not pushing ourselves to grow to the next level. And when we don't do that, you know, let me tell you something, every time you are going to a next level, it's a struggle. You got to be willing to struggle. You got to be willing to go through the, 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 the ringer, whatever it takes. I'm willing to go to my next level. Abraham was willing to go to his next level at 99 years old. Don't tell me you are old enough. If he can relearn the whole dynamics, Sarah learned, relearned the whole dynamics at 89. You won't get those positions easily. Amen. Now may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead. That great shepherd of the sheep. Through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Make you complete in every good work. To do his will. Working in you what is well pleasing in his sight. Through Jesus Christ. To whom be glory forever and ever. 
Amen. And I appeal to you, brethren, bear with the word of exhortation. For I have written to you in few words. Know that our brother Timothy has been set free, with whom I shall see you if he comes shortly. See, look at, he's saying all these things and he says, don't forget, I'm exhorting you. <laughs> it looks like slander if you don't understand the heart of God. But greet, uh, greet all those who rule over you and all the saints. Those from Italy greet you. Grace be with you all. Amen. So I'm here, I, here, I have a few statements to end with. If nothing else teach you the limitations of humanness, your body should as it is a prison. Your body should teach you how weak you are as a human. I can tell that. I'm just in my 40s right now. What I used to do in my 20s, be very honest, I can't. In 20s, I had so many wrecks on my motorcycles. So many of them. I still remember the times I would drag from all the way here to the end on the, on the, on the, on the highways. But I still just gotten up, took my bike back up and rode back. I'm not sure if I can, I mean, I had it just re-rendered the other day, <laughs> a couple of months ago. I'm still going through all these different doctors. <laughs> oh, Lord. But it should teach us, this is a prison, this is not our life. So that should also tell you how much you want to free yourself out of it. That's how much it should also teach us how to live by faith and not by sight. When I say sight, it's also by living by your body. People are depending on their body to do their job before they depend on their faith. That should be a revelation. No, for me, if it is not for you, for me, <laughs> it's a revelation. There is no more honorable thing than marriage. Keep it holy unto the Lord. There is nothing more honorable than marriage. That's why it's important. If you are a Christ follower, it is important that you exalt marriage. Exalt it. Marriage is not for the society, but for God's plan. If marriage doesn't exist, fornication or ad adultery doesn't exist either. This is exactly why the devil and society need to destroy it. Consistency should be a demand of your life as followers of Christ. I'm going to repeat that again. Consistency should be a demand of your life as followers of Christ. This is so lacking in our society right now. We are exciting people. We don't want to do things in our excitement. Not consistent. But God is looking for somebody who can be consistent. If some job was given to you yesterday, what are you doing about it today? If God asked you to live by faith yesterday, what are you doing it today? Consistent. 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 The more you become a consistently constant, the more you will see how much God is a consistently constant. The more, you know, what you don't sow, you can't reap. He gives us according to what you have given. If you are giving inconsistency to God, you will reap inconsistency from Him. That's why it's important that we live a life of consistency. Up or down. Whether you are in the valley or whether you are on the mountaintop, Jesus is still the Lord. Not counting on God's faithfulness is your disadvantage. You always need to count on God's faithfulness. Amen. You got something out of this? You got something out of Hebrews? Was it a good teaching? Leave me a comment. I'm just kidding. <laughs> 
You know, it's, it's, a, it's a good, powerful tool for us. We have all these tools that are there on Facebook, on YouTube. You can have your own uh, the channel. We can share those things. There are many people that are struggling, not knowing how to operate by faith. They have an idea to operate fi- by faith, but they don't need, they don't know. They don't have the tools. They don't have the, the teaching. That's why I encourage you, just, just share it. If it has ministered to you, if it really have, have given you the tools, the steps for you to use and utilize your faith, encourage it. Give it to others. So they may be blessed also. Amen? All right, let's end our uh, service with our confession. Oh, don't forget this Sunday, uh, Pastor Finney is coming. Um, our partner uh, in, in India, he's coming here with his kind of like a semi-world tour. I think he's been to multiple uh, countries before coming here and he'll, he'll be going uh, somewhere else. Uh, but when he comes here, I'm praying that we can give him a good time and a refreshing time as well as hear the word of the Lord that, ha- that he has through him. Uh, let us come to be a blessing for him when he comes, for him and his family. He has two boys and a wonderful wife right now. The wife is uh, taking care of the service there and services there. Anytime and every time I go there, she takes very good care of me. All this family, they take very good care of me. No matter when and what, what kind of a circumstances. Even when one of the things that I just want, uh, I need to share, I will share it again. Like even during the COVID times, they would just, I mean, nobody is wanting to see the neighbors at that peak of the times. He lets me come all the way from here, stay with him and do all the things that I have to do. But um, there's a lot that is there. So pray for it. Pray for the Sunday. Pray for him. He still has to come. He'll be coming here on Friday and then he'll stay with us a couple of days and then he'll be going back to different places in the U.S., so uh, come with that and please be sure to uh, invite anybody else uh, that could be an encouragement for, me, for him as well so they can have some word from the Lord. Amen? All right, let us end our service with our confession. Three, two, one. We are Covenant Fusion Church. We are a body of believers. We are blessed to be a blessing and we are filled for his glory. Amen. God bless you. We love you.